a very good morning students and welcome back to your english class today we are going to take a new chapter chapter number 5 thanksgiving tick your textbook page number 38 count your blessings instead of your crosses count your gains instead of your losses count your joys instead of your woes count your friends instead of your foes count your smiles instead of your tears count your courage instead of your fears count your full ears instead of your lean lean count your kind deeds instead of your mean count your health instead of your wealth count on god instead of yourself here the poem tells us that instead of the difficulties we have faced what we have to look into we have to look into the blessings that we have got from the god and instead of looking into the losses we had we have to look or we have to count about our gains means something good we get for our efforts okay next instead of your woes means troubles what we have to look we have to look into the joys we had gone through and instead of our enemies we have to count our friends and instead of our sorrows and tears we have to count our smiles and instead of fears we have to count our courage and instead of lean lean means ears when it is difficult to get things we need easily we have, what we have to look into full ears means lean means ears which is difficult when it is difficult to get things when we need it easily and full ears are the ears when the things we need when we get the things we need easily count your kind deeds instead of your means what does it mean we have to count about the kind things so good things we have done instead of the bad things we have done and what we have to count we have to count look into the health of ourselves instead of wealth count on god instead of yourself instead of looking into ourselves and instead of comparing us with ourselves or someone what we have to do we have to thank god for what we have okay i will send you the exercise section focus okay, answer section to whatsapp okay for a whole week week from monday to sunday note down the number of times you say thank you to those around you you could note it down at the end of every day at the end of a week you could count the number of times you said thank you and add it up have you thanked people enough remember saying please sorry and thank you is very important okay this is just to check the action of kindness of yours the acts of kindness of yours what you have to do is you have to count how many times you had thanked someone daily and you have to write it here okay Okay, let us name take the next chapter, chapter number six, the great flood in the Yellowstone Valley. The people of the Chayan tribe believe that when the Great Spirit made this world, He told the men, "Care for the mountains, the trees, and the rivers." He told them to take special care of the buffalo. The buffalo, He said, would provide. the people with 
milk and meat its hide would protect from them from heat rain wind and snow okay this is here in the story in the story it tells about chain tribe what they believed they believed that when the great spirit means god or the creator of the universe when the god made this world he had told the men that we have to take care of the mountains trees and rivers and what they have to take special care of they have to take special care of buffalo why it will give milk and meat to the people its hide would protect them from heat rain wind and snow here hide means the skin okay for many years the people followed what the great spirit had told them and lived in peace with the animals and took good care of the land things began to change when people from other places came to the yellowstone valley these visitors did not care for nature they started killing animals and cutting trees the great spirit was very displeased he sent heavy rains to destroy the people when the valley became flooded the people moved up the mountain okay and for many years what the people followed the people of the chain tribe followed what god said or what god had told them they took care of the land and the animals and when the people from other places came to the yellowstone valley everything got changed they didn't or they never took care of the for nature they have started killing animals and they have started cutting trees when they started doing this when they started this when the people from other places came to chain tribe to the yellowstone valley they did not took care of the nature they had started killing animals and cutting trees so god was angry with them. so he sent heavy rains to destroy or damage the people and what happened then the valley became flooded and the people moved up the mountains spotted bear the medicine man of the valley called a meeting of his people spotted bear is the medicine man of the valley and he called all the people of his tribe he told them the great spirit had told us that we would not be harmed as long as we had buffaloes but now there are no buffaloes we need to find buffaloes so that we can once again live in harmony with nature hearing this the young men of the tribe went in search of buffaloes what did the medicine man spotted bear told the people he told that god had told that if we have buffaloes with us we won't be harmed now we are not harming buffaloes we have to find them so what happened the young man in the tribe went to search for buffaloes he means living together peacefully only if they have buffaloes if they find buffaloes they can live peacefully along the way the young men try to correct the damage done to the nature they clean the forest so that the so that trees could grow well this made the animals and birds of the forest happy but it still continued to rain okay while the young men were went to search for buffaloes what they did they had cleaned they corrected the damage to done to nature they cleaned the forest 
so the trees can grow well so it made the animals and birds in the forest happy but the raining still continued then some young men came to the medicine man and told him that they had seen a buffalo a cow and its calf before they could reach the animals the buffalo was washed away by the flood okay some of the young men came to the spotted bear or the medicine man and what they told they told that they had seen a buffalo a cow and its calf but before before they could catch them what happened they flew they are fallen in the or they are washed away by the flood the young man brought it out of the water but it died however they brought back the hide of the buffalo spotted bear the medicine man cleaned the hide and stretched it over the valley then he prayed to the great spirit to save them as everyone had started caring for nature again then they had caught the buffalo but it was dead right then what happened they had brought the hide of the buffalo hide means skin they had brought the skin of the buffalo and they go gave it to the medicine man he cleaned the hide and he spread it that put it on the valley over the valley he stretched it he spread it over the valley then he prayed to god to save them from the strain or the flood so as all of the people had started caring for nature again so it kept raining yellowstone valley was protected by the hide animals too moved under the hide the men started taking care of them when the great spirit saw that the men were living in harmony with nature again he stopped the rain it was still raining right the yellowstone valley was protected by the what by the hide or the skin of that buffalo the animals move to move under the hide all the animals also moved under the hide and the men of the yellowstone valley had to great care of the animals when god saw that they are taking care of the animals and they are living peacefully with nature he stopped the rain then the sun came out and the hide started shrinking it began to take the shape of an arch across the valley the arch then became a wonderful sorry a colorful rainbow the people of the valley smiled happily they were very happy that the great spirit had forgiven them now when the rain stopped the sun came out and the skin of the buffalo started shrinking means it became smaller in size okay and it takes the shape of an it it now it is the shape of an arch across the valley and then it became a colorful rainbow and the all the people of the valley are very happy now they thanked the god for for giving them okay that's all all about the story okay you have to do the match the following you by yourself okay i'll send you the question answers to whatsapp an adverb is a word that modifies or tells us something more about a verb an adjective or another adverb okay you have already learned what is an adjective you know what is a noun what is a verb and what is an uh adjective right now is the naming words or the name of person place thing or animal and what is verb this is the action verb word right 
an adjective is the word that modifies a noun and here adverb is a word that modifies or tells us something more about a verb an adjective or an another adverb for example the baby smiled sweetly here which one is the verb here smiled this is the thing what the baby does this word tells us the action right so here sweetly is the word that modifies the word smiled so smiled is the verb and sweetly is the adverb he spoke slowly here spoke is the verb and slowly is the word that modifies the verb spoke and this is called adverb he is a very happy man here very is an adjective right sorry sorry happy is an adjective here happy man here happy qualifies the noun man right so this is an adjective and the word very modifies the adjective happy so this is the adverb so here all the words that modifies or tells more about the verb an adjective or an adverb another adverb is called what adverb now take page number 44 filling the blanks with the adverbs from the box here are some adverbs given in the box and some sentences are given below you have to choose the correct adverb from the box and fill in the blanks okay next look at the following sentences i sat by the river bank father went to the bank to withdraw money the word bank in the first sentence refers to the sloping area by the side of a river whereas word bank in the second sentence refers to a place where your money can be withdrawn from or deposited in such words with more than one meaning are called homonyms okay have you understood here in the sentence i sat by the river bank please notice the words that is written in bold letters i sat by the river bank and see the second one father went to the bank to withdraw money what is the meaning of the first bank a sloping area by the side of a river it is called bank in first sentence and what is the sick bank in second sentence it refers to a place where your money can be withdrawn from or deposited here both words are having same spelling and they pronounce the same right but they are having different meaning these words are called homonyms the words with same spelling and same pronunciation and different meaning are called homonyms okay read the hints given and fill in the missing letters one has been done for you okay here there are some homonyms given but it is not complete some letters are missing here and the meanings two meanings are there for the same word like bank so the meanings are given here you have to write the word here you have to write the missing letters here okay do you know the story of the rabbit and the foolish lion with the help of the pictures write the story in your own words in your notebook okay here are some pictures given actually this is a story many of you might have known of the story of the rabbit clever rabbit and the foolish lion 
okay by looking at the pictures what you have to do is you have to write a story in your notebook okay okay let us learn the next chapter grow more trees tick page number 48 okay scene 1 crow hello parrot parakeet hello i belong to the parrot family but my name is parakeet crow oh we don't we didn't know we will call you parakeet from now on but why do you look unhappy parakeet i am hungry i can't find any fruits earlier okay this is a conversation now in scene 1 there is a conversation between crow and a parrot now crow is wishing parrot hello parrot and the parrot whose name is parakeet tells that i am belong i belong to a parrot family and what is his name it is parakeet and crow told that they were not knowing that and they will call you parakeet from now on and he is asking the crow is asking the parrot why it is looking unhappy now the parrot says he is feeling hungry and he can't find any fruits earlier there were a lot of trees here now they have cut down all the trees to build apartments crow for mina and me for us not a problem at all we get plenty of it parakeet how we feed on food thrown away by human beings crow since we eat the waste that people throw away we are called scavengers okay now parrot is complaining that there were a lot of trees here but now there is no trees why the people are cutting the trees to make apartments apartments means buildings with many houses or flats now crow is telling that for mina and crow they are getting enough food we get plenty of it plenty means a lot now the parrot is asking how do they get the food now the mina is telling that they are getting the food the people throw away the people throw away many foods for the human beings throw away a lot of foods and they can get it they eat that crow since we eat the face waste that people throw away we are called scavengers and peep sorry crow and mina are eating the food from the waste that the people throw away so they are called scavengers scavengers means animals or birds that search for food among waste and rubbish mina but now we are no longer able to keep the place clean we throw away more waste than we eat can eat now the mina is complaining that they cannot keep the place clean why the human beings are throwing away a lot of waste that they can eat than they can eat now the crow is telling parakeet maybe you can join us and look for the food in the dustbin now the crow is telling them that you can join us you can join us and the parrot can join mina and crow that they can get the food and look for the food in the dustbin parakeet sob sob i don't know how to pick fruits from dustbin and she tells that parrot tells that she don't know how to take the food from the dustbin crow parakeet don't cry let us find food for you i'm sure there are some fruits fruit trees left mina i saw a fruit tree a few fruit trees in a school in the south of the city come let us fly to that place parakeet excitedly yes yes let us fly to the school quickly now uh, crow is telling that please don't cry parrot we can search for food for the parrot there are some trees fruit trees left in the place 
Now the Maina tells that there are some fruit trees in the school in the south of the city. And they are go flying to that place. And the parrot, parrot was very excited and she told that she want to fly to the school now. Scene 2. They reach the school and find the fruit trees. Parakit starts eating some red berries. Now they reach the school and there were some fruit trees there. And the what the parrot is eating now, it, is, it starts eating some red berries. Hello Sparrow, do you live here? Sparrow, no, I have my nest under the roof of that building. But I overheard the human being say that they are going to pull down the building. I don't know where to go. Mina, building nest has become a problem for all of us. So, they cut down all the trees where I lived. Mina. Crow was not in her nest when they cut down the trees, so she lost all her eggs. Now the this saw so a sparrow there. And they are asking the sparrow that is the sparrow living in that tree? And she told that no, she is living. The sparrow is living under the low roof of the building. And the people are saying that they are going to pull down. Pull down means destroy the building. And Sparrow is very confused where to go. And Mina is telling that now we are not able to build the nest because the people are cutting down all the trees. So it is a problem for us now. Now Crow is telling that they have the human beings have cut down the tree where the Crow lived. Now the Mina is telling that Crow was not there in her nest when the People, human being cut down the tree and she had lost all her eggs. Sparrow, why don't human beings think of us when they cut down trees? Crow, they know that trees give them shade and oxygen to breathe, yet they cut down trees. Sparrow, how can we make human beings understand that they should not cut down trees? Crow, if we tell the children that cutting down trees is not good, either for them or for us, they will surely listen. Mina, we must also tell them not to waste food. The dustbins are overflowing. So children, if you hear the chirping of these words, listen carefully. For they are all saying, Please don't cut down trees. Please grow more trees. Please don't waste food. Now, the sparrow is telling that. He is asking, why the human beings are not thinking about the birds and animals that live on the trees? Now, the crow is saying that the people know the trees give them shade and the oxygen to breathe. But still they are cutting down the trees. Now the sparrow asks, how can we make human beings understand that they should not cut down trees? Now, crow is telling we can tell the children to not cut the trees. This is not good for them. And us too. They will surely listen. Mina tells that we should also tell them to not waste food in the because the dustbin is overflowing. Overflowing means flowing out of a container that is already full. So it is already full. Now it is more than the dustbin can hold. So they are telling us this chapter is for you the children they are telling can you see the words of the sorry can you hear the words of the birds chirping means the what they are saying they are telling us not to cut the trees not to waste the food and what you should take care of the trees and you should grow more trees Okay, that's all about the story. And please do the match the following and draw a false section by yourself. When we write sentences, we use pronunciation marks so that we can understand the written words easily. We use the capital letter to start a new sentence. The dot we place after a sentence is called the full stop. We know the sentence has ended when we reach a full stop. A comma represents the shortest pause. We use a comma when we list three or more items. 
we used and before the last item in a list okay you know how to write a sentence you should always start a sentence with a full stop and it should end the sentence with a full stop sorry you should start a letter sorry a sentence with a capital letter you should always start a capital the sentence with a capital letter and you should end the sentence with a full stop and if you want a shortest pause in between you use a comma and also when we are listing about three or more items we use a comma in between and before the last item you have to write a and for example she bought apples mangoes guavas and oranges here is the fruits list right there are three or more items here so we separated with a comma and before the last word we use an and okay a question ends in a question mark a sentence ends with the full stop and a question ends with a question mark for example what have you done this is a question right why are you going there so a question always should always end with the question mark an apostrophe is used to mark position of nouns for example the bag belongs to tina or the bag of tina can be written as tina's bag okay if you are telling about someone's we use an apostrophe after the word okay the toy of chami can be written as chami's toy can you see that it is also used to show the omission of letters as in the contractions like did not didn't is not isn't and cannot can't okay it tells about the missing letters instead of o we have used an apostrophe here right in the following sentences use the correct punctuation marks whenever necessary and rewrite them in the blanks provided <coughs> the my favorite colors are red yellow orange and purple here there is a sentence you have to use the correct punctuation marks you have to use the correct capital letter you have to use the full stop you have to use the comma and if it is a question mark question you have to use a question mark okay and apostrophe in the place okay you have to follow all the rules when writing a sentence and you have to rewrite the sentences below okay now rewrite the phrases using apostrophes the rag of the bus you have to write this using an apostrophe here we have learned bag of tina as tina's bag so the dog of the bus is the bus bag okay like that you have to rewrite the phrases using apostrophes okay next we have already learned what is an adverb it tells about more about the verb adjective or another adverb okay adverbs are words that tell us how or the manner in which an action takes place adjectives are words that tell us something more about a person or a thing we have know what is an adverb and what is an adjective adjective is the word that modifies a person or thing or a noun okay usually an adverb is formed by adding ly to an adjective let us look at a few examples okay how an adverb is formed it is you form by adding ly to an adjective rahul is careful it is the adjective here rahul is a careful driver rahul drives carefully we have formed adverb carefully by adding ly to the adjective the bulbul has a sweet voice the bulbul swings sings sweetly here to the adjective sweet we are adding ly and thus forms a adverb we have also have adverbs without ly without adding ly we can form adverbs he walks fast she walks hard the bird flew straight at me okay filling the blanks with adverbs of the word q1 in the brackets okay 
in here you have to fill in the blanks the adverbs of the words are given in the bracket okay you have to write it you have to correct it by adding ly okay okay now take page number 54 when we want to ask for information about something we use the question mark sorry question word what example what is the meaning of scavengers what is your father's name when we want to ask about a place or location or position we use the question word where for example where does the sparrow live where does sudhir's house okay here we are going to learn about the question words what and where when we use a question word what if you want to ask for information about something what which question word we use we use the question word what if you want to ask for information about something we use the question word what and if you want to ask about a place location or position we use the question word where okay how will you frame the questions if you want to know the following ask the questions aloud to your friend take turns and complete the following what you have to do is here are some answers given okay it is not complete you have to complete it but before that you have to make the question for these answers using what or where if you are asking about some information you have to use the question word what and if you are asking about a place location or position you have to use the question word where so thus you have to make questions using what and where and you have to write the answers of this okay now take page number 55 an informal letter is a letter written to one's own parents relatives or friends let us learn to write an informal letter formal letter is a letter written to the officials or a official letter okay an informal letter is a letter written to on parents or relatives or friends okay to the near ones okay let us learn how to write an informal letter the following information should be kept in mind while writing a letter okay while you are writing an informal letter these are the rules you have to follow the address from which you are writing the letter means your address first you have to write your address next is the date on which you are writing the letter okay sender's address then what date and next is receivers name first you have to write your address then date and the name of the person you are writing to the writing the letter to and then the address of the person to whom you are writing the letter generally all informal letters follow a particular format the format of an informal letter is given below okay you have to write everything in the left side here let us see an example here this is written here it is written the sender's ad address means who is sending the letter then it is the date then it is the receiver's address a salutation dear grandpa hope this letter finds you in good health as you are already aware my final exams are over we will be coming to see you on the 1st of may father did not get leave earlier otherwise i would have been with you much earlier than this i am eagerly waiting to see you all and spend my vacation there convey my regards to all at home okay this is a written letter by a girl to her grandpa yours affectionately or lovingly ria okay first you have to write the your address then date then salutation then what the letter what you want to write 
and the subscription and signature now what you have to do is write a letter to your uncle telling him about the way people cut down a lot of trees to make apartments near your house and how you feel about cutting how down trees okay you have to write a letter to your uncle based on what some people are cutting down trees nearby your house to make apartments so you are writing your feelings about cutting trees okay you have to write a letter to your uncle okay you have to write it and send it to me through whatsapp okay now take next chapter page number 57 jappy and jappy now jackie sorry jappy he came in a ship in the ship on the sea all the way from japan this old little man all the way from japan in a ship on the sea came this odd little man on a visit to me japina she brought her umbrella from far off japan and in her country she uses a fan her house of is the her house is of paper without any door and when it is tea time she sits on the floor here jappy and japina came to visit the poet how jappy came he came in a ship from japan and on what toward he came he came in a ship on the sea he came to visit the poet and japina came to visit the poet what did she brought she brought her umbrella from far off japan from where they came they both came from japan and what she uses what japina uses in her country she uses a fan and her what is her house made of her paper sorry her house is of paper and it does not have any door and during the tea time she sits on the floor Okay, that's all about the poem. It's a poem by Richard Hunter. Look at the picture here. It shows a woman wearing a traditional dress of her country. It is called a kimono. Okay, this is a traditional dress which is seen in Japan. Okay. Now, get into groups and collect pictures of the traditional dresses of different states of India. Paste them on a chart paper and display it in class. now what you have to find is you have to find which places these trustees traditional dresses belong to and you have to write on the names under the names of the places under the pictures okay that's all about the chapter and we have completed our uh, chapters from next class onwards we will start the revision okay